inside today we have our 1976 F-250 and I bought this thing just yesterday out of the back of a uh, farmer's uh, backyard or field whatever you like to call it there and um, anyway it sat for a long time and we got it for a pretty good deal picked it up for a thousand dollars and it seems like it has some sort of a towing package on it it is indeed an FE engine and if you're familiar with FEs um, it's very hard to tell the difference between a 360 and a 390. Now, I do not believe the 360 came with a factory four barrel intake like what this has on it, but uh, the fella did tell me the engine was rebuilt and he used to have the paperwork for it from the previous owner before him. But, you know, at that point someone could have taken a stock four barrel intake manifold and thrown it on and this could be a 360. So we want to go ahead and verify that that this is indeed a 390 and it's um, really not too hard to figure out. Obviously the block is the same between the 360 and 390. The rotating assembly is all that varies. So it's very hard to tell from the outside and you really have to um, get a look at the internals. But there is a way that I'm going to show you here today on how to go through and measure the stroke on this guy. And um, you know originally I bought this truck for parts but it after I tuned it up and dialed it in it runs pretty decent so if it's a 390 uh, with the four speed in there I guess three speed with granny low it'll be a pretty slick truck here and for what I paid for it a pretty good deal so um, all you're gonna need is a straw and a permanent marker and um, the key is making sure you keep your permanent marker in the same place as you go throughout this process because a 360 is a three and a half inch stroke and uh, the 390 is about um, three and a quarter or so. Uh, that's not the exact numeric on the 390, but um, you'll be able to tell on a tape measure at least to that degree. And we'll throw up the actual numbers here below. But um, anyway, what I like to do with my permanent marker to keep it nice and consistent is this um, exhaust port here I want to go against that and then push it all the way up to the cylinder head so it's down and against the cylinder head and then I'm going to come back and set it against the alternator and this way we have three points of contact so we can be very consistent with our marking obviously there's not a huge difference between a 360 and a 390 stroke relatively um, so if you get a little uh, wonky with your permanent marker here, you might get a false reading. So I only have one hand here, and I'm going to go ahead and make the mark on my straw. So again, in this way, the straw has to come up and touch in one place the same way every time, and everything stays nice and consistent. Obviously, we're at top dead center of cylinder one, as per the harmonic balancer markings here. And... Um, you know, it doesn't matter if you're actually 180 degrees off. Obviously, the crank rotates um, twice to every one time the valve train does. We're not doing anything with the ignition or with the valve train. Obviously, the compression stroke is best to be on, which we, uh, I think I'm up on right now, and um, really give you the best results here. But anyway, so I'm going to make the mark on our straw and turn the engine over, and we'll check back. All right, so with our straw pushed all the way down against the top of the piston, I went ahead and made my mark, if you can see it there. And now we're just going to go ahead and turn the engine over by hand, um, little by little here. So I don't have a wrench on the thing, of course. So we're going to go ahead and crank on the fan. I need both arms for this, so I'm going to go ahead and turn the engine. Obviously, if you have a wrench down on the crank, um, you're at much more of an advantage, but we can do it with the fan, no big deal. And so we'll just turn around and make marks as we go. And obviously we're watching for um, when our marks uh, stop or they start to get smaller again. We know we've reached our maximum point. And we want to go incrementally so we don't want to go past what we're actually aiming for. We're not on the compression stroke. We're 180 degrees off as I'm seeing, but that's okay. So we've gone a little ways. We're gonna make our our mark. So as you see, we started out here and we're all the way to this point. And the farther you go, you just wanna go little bits at a time like such. Turn the crank, take our straw, make our mark. 
Make sure to have a good permanent marker. This one's a little questionable, I guess. Turn the crank a little more. Make our mark. And it's it's pretty hard to mess this up because the piston is actually going to dwell as it goes down and when it turns around. Um, it'll dwell at the bottom of its stroke there. So should be pretty easy to catch. Looks like on our measurements here we're still going down. Turn it over a little bit more. Want to keep make sure to keep your permanent marker aligned so that's a false line there above. Looks like we're still going down. Alright, it looks like we've reached our dwell point. It didn't move on that last turn. Let me turn it just a little bit more to see if our mark is okay. It's started to get shorter now. So with that, yep, definitely getting shorter. Let's do one more verification. But the piston is indeed coming back up and it sure is. So now you can see where we started down here and you can see where we ended as you can see the importance of doing it a little bit at a time so we're going to take a measurement from this mark here to this mark here and that will give us the relative stroke of our engine and we'll be able to determine if it is indeed a 390 or a 360. all right so we have our straw here and we can see from our final mark so we're starting over here here's our initial mark and then our final mark looks like it's just past the three-quarter side. Let me just jump this over to the other side make it easier to see. So it's hanging out just a skosh past uh, three-quarters there. So um, by that measurement, I'd say it's definitely a 390. Um, and I've done this a couple times now just to verify. I keep coming up with the same measurement as well. So that's pretty darn encouraging there, and I think unfortunately even though I bought this rig for parts that means I'm probably going to end up keeping it together with how well it runs and just um, when you're going down the road the sheer power of the thing. And so that's, that's pretty awesome, we're happy to see that. So there you go, that's kind of how you do the straw test to determine your stroke. Obviously we'd be at the three and a half um, jurisdiction there if it was a 360 and we are well past that so that's super encouraging and obviously your engine internals if you have a valve relief in your piston none of that matters because we're taking an initial reading going down and taking another reading and um you know that's that's just awesome so there you go 360 versus 390 and definitely today we have a 390 in front of us and as i move forward working through this truck it ran so good i'm just making sure all of our push rods are good and straight which is a typical fe issue having bent push rods and so far we're looking good so awesome pretty much of a, a heck of a deal there for a thousand dollars can't complain about that so anyway today we're going to do the nickel test where we're going to try and balance a nickel on the float bowl of this carburetor so anyway, I just got done doing the test here, just letting it run to see if it'll vapor lock. So it's been idling for about 30 minutes, and it looks like we're in pretty good shape here. Try not to get my hand cut off. Nice low idle, probably 500 RPM. There we go. There's our nickel test. Nice, smooth, balanced engine. Can't argue with that. She's barely hanging on, but she's sitting there. Obviously, you can see that's a completely normal nickel. No magnets, no nothing. So, pretty sweet. Pretty encouraging there. I think we got ourselves a good buy.